now again ayat which were revealed in the qad of 9 along with the first six now here we start you can join with them the first six the ultimatum the ayat of the ultimatum laqad nasarakum allah fi mawatin kaseeratin wa yawm hulain o muslims don't fear that such a big ultimatum what come what has come what has happened to muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam they were munafiqeen all right they would have thought you know again they have gone crazy such a big ultimatum to all the tribes of the arabian peninsula what a big step all the tribes i have i had counted three all the tribes with whom there was no treaty they will come first the ultimatum to them was only for 40 days faizun sarakha na shurum faqtul mushrik ki rahat wajat tu then come those with whom there was a treaty but without any specified period of time four months those who had a treaty with a fixed time period you complete the time but you know no tribe of the Arab, arabian peninsula left over challenging all of them so there must have been some fears in the minds of some people even the sincere people even the mu'minin so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reassuring don't worry laqad nasarakum allah fi mawatina kaseera allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been help you helping you in many battlefields by yawm hunain and also on the day of hunain now this hunain was after the victory of makka so it proves that these ayat you know they are revealed after hunain is ajabatkum kasratukum when your great number elated you they were very proud you were very proud we are 12000 today there was a time when we were only 313 and we were not defeated now we are 12000 the 10000 who had gone to makka and 2000 more from the people who converted to islam after the victory of makka or they were still kufar but because now they were under muslims they volunteered to go with muslims to fight for them so the total number was 12000 so big number so they thought now there's no no danger is ajabatkum kasratukum falam tughni ankum shay'an nothing could save you wa zaqat alaykum al ard bima rahabat and the land despite its vastness became very narrow for you summa wallaytum mudbirin and then you turn your backs running away from the battlefield this happened at hunain some people say only 30 sahaba remained with the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam but you know the more dependable traditions go to about 300 but only 300 out of 12000 it was a big you know flight from the field because when they entered it a valley on both sides there were the mountain range and on the tops there were the archers sitting and the volleys you know arrows came in volleys sudden there was a panic people fled summa anzal allah sakinatahu ala rasulihi then allah subhanahu wa taala sent down calm on his messenger This is the day when the bravery of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam became apparent. And you know all were running away. He descended from his camel or horse whatever it was I don't know. He took the alam in his own hand. The standard in his own and then he said بس انا النبي لا كذب انا ابن عبد المطلب i am prophet of allah there's no doubt about it 
whether these 12,000 stand here and protect me and support me or they all free. I am the Rasul of Allah. Anan Nabi Yolakudin. And I am the son of Abdul Muttalib is here standing in this field. Anan Ibn Abdul Muttalib. And then he called, Ilayya ya Ma'ashar al-Muslimin. Ilayya ya Ashab al-Badr. Ilayya ya Ashab al-Shajara. Where are you running? Oh, those, those people who were with me at Badr. Oh, those people who were there at the time of the Bayat al-Rizwan. Ashab al-Shajara. Shajara. Then people returned. It was actually a reflex action. A sudden, you know, volleys of arrows coming. So this was a very sort of you know, a reflex section. And then people came round. Summa anzal Allahu sakhidatahu ala rasulihi wa al mu'minin wa anzal a junoodan lag tarawha. And he sent down armies whom you couldn't see. The armies of the angels. Wa azzab al ladhina kafaru. And he punished and chastised those who had unbelieved. Wa zalika jazaun kafirin. And this is the reward of the of those who deny or reject the true faith. Summa yatub Allahu min baadi ala zalika man yasha. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala turns with his mercy to whomsoever he likes. That is, he gives him the decision he makes to repent. So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts his repentance. Summa yatub Allahu min baadi zalika ala man yasha. Wallahu ghafur rahim. Allah is forgiving and merciful. Ya ayu alazin amanu innam al-mushrikudar najasun Fala yakrabu al-masjid al-haram This was also one of the proclamations which were made by Hazrat Ali Razi Allah Ta'ala Anhu in Mina and Arafah on that Hajj that now from this year on no mushrik will be able to come here and do the pilgrimage Ya ayu alazin amanu innam al-mushrikudar najasun Oh, you who believe, these mushriks who associate equals to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are filthy. فَلَا يَقْرَبُ الْمَسْجِدَ الْحَرَامَ بَعْدَ عَبِهِمْ هَذَا Now let them, don't let them come near the sacred mosque after this year. وَإِنْ خِفْتُمْ عَيْلَةً And if you are fearful of poverty, because these pilgrims come, they present something to Kaaba, and they, you know, distribute charity to the people over here. Now, if they are barred, you know, this, we shall become poor. فَصَفَ يُغْنِكُمُ اللَّهُ مِنْ فَصْلِهِ Very soon Allah will make, will make you rich, rich, will enrich you from His bounty. In Shah, if He, if he so likes. In اللَّهَ عَلِيمُ hakim Allah is all-knowing, all-wise. قَاتِلُ الَّذِينَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ Now this is the verdict about the rest of the humanity. Take away the mushrikeen of the Arabian Peninsula only of the time of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. About them there was no third alternative either embrace Islam or you will be killed. The third was that you flee away from here. Leave the land. But for the rest, now here only the Jews and the Christians are mentioned, but this is actually for the whole of the humanity. Fight against those, those of the people whom the books, book was given before you. But they don't actually believe in Allah. Or they don't profess to do it. They don't have actual belief and faith in the last day. They are not accepting as forbidden what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has declared as forbidden. And not only Allah but also His Messenger. And they are not obeying the deen of haq And Muhammad is sent to make the deen of Allah supreme. They are not ready to accept 
the supremacy of the deen of Allah. So you have to fight them. Hatta yotu jizyat an yadim wahum sahirun. Until they pay the tribute, the jizya, with their own hands, that is, with willing submission, and they become subdued. They accept the supremacy of Islamic State, the supremacy of Islamic law, and then, you know, under that, they are allowed to live as Christians or Jews. And for that matter, as Hindus, as Buddhists, or so on, whatsoever they are, they can live. If they accept the supremacy of the Islamic State, they will not be forced to accept Islam. Not that you will be killed if you don't accept Islam. This caution, you know, in religion, like Rahafiddin, no, on, on personal basis, except those people to whom Muhammad was sent directly, his birsate khassa, that is the exception. But Keeping them aside for the whole of humanity, no compulsion, no portion, no individual would be forced to accept Islam. But the system, the political, socio economic system, it will be shattered if you have the force. The system will belong to Allah. But when the deen is supreme, under this deen, supremacy of Allah's deen, you can remain as Christians, as Jews, as Hindus, as Buddhists. You will get, you know, the guarantee from Islamic State of the safety of your lives, your property, your honor. You will be allowed to worship anything in any way you like. You will have your full guarantee of the personal law, marriages, etc. as you like. Law of inheritance as you like. Your places of worship will also be protected, like mosques, rather more than the mosques. All these things will be guaranteed to you, and a tax will be taken from you. But you have to accept the supremacy of the Islamic State. That is crucial. Because, you know, in a hadith which I have referred many a times in my lectures on Khilafah, there is the hadith from Miqdad ibn Aswad radiyallahu ta'ala an, included in the musnad of Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal rahimahullah. And according to this hadith, the Prophet said, لا يبقى على ظهر الأرض بيت وبر ولا مدر إلا أدخله الله كلمة الإسلام بعز عزيز وذل زليل إما يعزهم الله فيجعلهم من أهلها laha. The Prophet said, there will not remain even a single house made of bricks and clay, or nor for that matter any tent of, you know, made of blankets from the hair of camel, in which Allah will not make the kalima of Islam enter. Global domination of Islam is is to come before the end of this world. No house, no tent on the whole surface of the earth. The settled civilization as well as the nomad, nomadic civilization, all covered. But this kalima of Islam will enter in the house or the tent in either of the two ways. Honoring the honorable one, if the owner of the house and the tent accepts Islam, he is honored. Islam enters in his house or tent, honoring him also. Number two, the weak should have to subdue, accept the supremacy. What does it mean? His house or tent is also governed. By the law of the land, Islam has entered in his house also. But he remains, you know, a kafir. He is deprived of the honor of Islam. And then this prophet explained. What does it mean? Is there a reason? Imma Allah will give them honor. 
بھائی جال من اہل اینڈ ہی ول میک دیم دی پیپل آف دیٹ کلیما دے ول بی سینگ اشد اللہ الہ الا اللہ و اشد اللہ محمد رسول اللہ اور دے ول بی سب ڈیوڈ او یو ذل ہوم ف یدینون اللہ یدینون اللہ دی سیم ٹرم وچ از یوزڈ ہیئر یدینون اللہ دے ول ہیو ٹو بی سب آرڈینیٹس ٹو دی دین اف اللہ So this is the ayah. قَاتِلُ الَّذِينَ لَا يُمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَلَا بِالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَلَا يُحَرِّبُونَ مَا حَرَّبَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ وَلَا يَدِينُونَ دِينَ الْحَقِّ مِنَ الَّذِينَ عُوتُ الْكِتَابَ حَتَّى يُوتُ الْجِزْيَةَ عَيَّذِينَ وَهُمْ صَاغِرُونَ 